But according to 2 Timothy 1.7, it says that God gave us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. As I was meditating on this scripture the other day, I realized that in exchange for one thing, God gave us three things. Power. Power. Fear robs us of power. We feel like we're out of control when fear comes. But God says you have been given authority. As the pastor prayed, he had said, we have been given the authority to tread upon serpents, upon adders, upon every evil work. We have been given the authority. So in replace of fear, God gave us power. Amen. And then in, in replace of fear, God gave us love. Amen. The word of God said, perfect love casts out all fear. God's love is perfect and he has given us that love. The same spirit is inside of us. We have love that can cast out anything. Amen. So we've got two powerful things here to combat fear. And then we have a sound mind. When fear comes, our minds get fud, messed up. We don't know what we're doing. We say this thing, I don't know what I'm going to do. There's another version that says disciplined. Self-control. God has given us control. Self-control. We cannot control what's going on, but we can control how we deal with it. And these three things replace fear. And that has been our driving scripture for the past four weeks. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Today, we're going to look at a story. Because in the Word of God... The books, the, the things that are written in God's word are not just there for us to play around with. The Bible says that God is the same yes. yesterday, today, and forever. So that means the same way God was in the Bible is the same way God is today. The same way God dealt with people in the Bible is the same way God's dealing with us today. So we're going to look at one, the last uh um, section of fearless. Two, two guys, David and Goliath. Who knows that story? Yes, that's a really common story. And we're going to learn some things from David and Goliath about being fearless. So, this story begins with a battle. If you've got your Bible, turn to 1 Samuel 17. You have on one side the Philistines on a mountain. And then on the other side, you have Israel and their army on a mountain. And between them is this large valley. This is where the battle will take place. So we have the scene is set. But there's something different about this battle today. And we pick up the story in 1 Samuel 17, 4-7. And it says, a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out from the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. I've never met anybody that tall. Have you? The most I think is six five, six seven that I've seen. So this guy was a giant. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 125 pounds. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze jacket was slung on his back. His shield bearer went ahead of him. So here is Goliath, who comes out against the Philistines and goes into the battlefield. He's a huge man, and his reputation precedes him. He is a warrior among warriors. Yet, he walks up and down, looking at the army of Israel and checking out the competition. The Bible says that the devil walks up and down, checking us out, checking out the competition. And then he begins to do something, Goliath. 
he begins to taunt Israel. The Philistines, he said to them, This day I defy the ranks of Israel. The word defy means to pour out obscenities like an obscene guest gesture. So here was this big, tall, nine-foot man with all the armor on. And what was he doing? Taunting. Come out and fight. Let us fight one another. And on that day, on that, uh, give me a man and let us fight each other. So he's saying, send out one man. Let's do a one-on-one -on -one thing. On hearing the Philistines' word, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. You see, back then, it was not uncommon to see a, sh a champion come out and challenge another champion to fight for their nation. But the difference this day was Goliath and all his men received a response. So, on hearing it, they got dismayed. That word dismayed means they got broken. Have you ever been broken? Somebody says something to you that just broke your spirit. Something happened that just filled you with terror. This is what happened to these guys. You, you got to understand that Saul was known to be a valiant warrior. He wasn't just an ordinary guy. He, was, he had a reputation of being a warrior. And the men that he had were considered the best of the best. Question is, why couldn't they take Goliath? If he was a valiant warrior and they were the best of the best, why couldn't they take him? Fear. Fear makes us feel inadequate and powerless against the devil's taunts. And that's what uh, Goliath was doing. He was taunting them. You're wondering, how does that happen to me now? Remember the battle is in our minds sometimes. What is going through your mind? There's a whole bunch of stuff. You can't do it. You won't be successful. Who tell you that you could go there? Who told you that people would listen to you when you talk? Who told you you could do that? You're nobody. You're nothing. Especially if we heard it from we were little. It becomes ingrained in us. And that is a Goliath. That is what, happened, what, what was happening here. So, this is why this day was different. Because they brought Goliath, and Goliath, everyone knew, was a warrior among warriors. And all of the great warriors saw Goliath, and they were broken. Because in their minds, they thought they didn't have a chance to beat this guy. This is Goliath. How are we going to beat him? How are we going to conquer him? The Bible says that as a man thinketh, in his heart, so is he. You know when, when um, they went to check out the promised land? The spies? Yeah. They went out there and only two came back with a good report. Saying, yeah, we can take it. But the other said, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. How do they know what they look like? They didn't talk to them. But because they saw themselves as, as grasshoppers, as little they thought everybody saw them the same way. Do you know exactly how you see yourself is exactly what you think people see you as? Did you know? If you think that people see you some way, you're going to project it on them. You're going to start declaring your words now, start to frame your world. You're going to say they think that I am nobody. Pastor came out of a Hindu background. If he had listened to the, everybody who said, how can you be a pastor? He wouldn't be a pastor today. He would not have left Hinduism. Many of us, before we got saved, we had those questions. How am I going to live this life? I'm going to fall. I'm going to faint. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to do something wrong. But what is your Goliath? 
In our lives, we all have a Goliath that we have to face. And the question I want you to answer as we start talking about Goliath is I want you to identify your Goliath. What is it? I am talking about the thing that you don't want to bring up. Do you know why? Because you think you can't defeat it. That thing that has been in your life that maybe you fought it before and lost. And so you think, there's no way I can win. A good life in my life is my weight. People laugh. Why are you laughing? It's a good life for me. I am looking and I'm going, how am I going to lose all this weight? Now I'm simplifying it. Because I've tried before. I've been on the diets. Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, Cabbage Soup, all soup, all chocolate, no chocolate. Anybody? Have we done that? Some of us, Dr. Bernstein, I would never do that because I don't have the money. And I know I said, God, if I put up at the weight, I'm going to kill Dr. Bernstein. <laughs> I've been giving him all that money. So let me save myself from prison ministry. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's a Goliath. It's a Goliath because I think that people see me as fat. Because that's how I see myself. Can I be real? Yes. Don't come back and talk to me about this now. <laughs> it's done here. After you go through the door, don't talk to me about my weight. Because then you know I'm going to be real upset. <laughs> you know, don't say I asked to see have a diet for you. Please, no. Just pray for me to face the life. Thank you so much. So we give up. So eventually one day I just said, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to eat what I want. And do whatever, and you know, whatever. But that's not the response. I need to face the life. I need to deal with the issue. So, some of us, it's, it's more, it's bigger than that. It's an addiction to cigarettes, to pornography, to television. To romance novels, to other things that are really deep and dark, and we don't want no one to know about it. But it's that it's holding us, it's gripping us, it's talking to us, and fear talks. Fear has a voice. This morning, as the topic depicted it so clearly, it's speaks. It says, you will never beat me. It says, I control you and I will always control you. Fear speaks. And sometimes we have trouble identifying the lion because we have lived with it so long that it's a part of us. Did you know that it was not God's intention for us to have diabetes or hypertension? But we live with the disease so long that we don't even recognize it as a Goliath anymore. Some of us, the Goliath is someone that is mistreating us, but we live with that treatment so long that it's normal. Because human beings have a capacity to adapt. And so whatever our environment is, we adapt to it. Some of us, it's, a, it's a, an addiction or it's, it's like an anger towards God. We carry that anger so long that we don't even recognize that we're angry with God anymore. But God knows. And God wants us to say, look, 
I need to face this thing. I need to deal with my Goliath. I need to deal with my fear. I need to deal with the fact that I don't believe God inside here.